Hey, what's going on everyone? Joe Menza here. And I thought, well, this time I better do something a little easier, a little more simplified. If I don't want to lose all my supporters getting too challenging and some, uh, you know, I push things a little further. So uh, this time I thought I'd kind of focus a little more on how can we get an easy sky? You know, skies are so difficult for so many people. So let's just keep it as basic as we can, at least for the sky part. Okay, this is one of the easiest skies I know how to do. And this just involves wetting the paper. This is Strathmore 9 by 12, I think it is. This is Strathmore 400. So I'm just going to coat it with some water three quarters of the way down, okay? And we'll let that absorb into the paper a little bit. People say, how much water are you putting on? Well, if I dip this into here, see how this is dripping? If I dip my brush into this cup and I wipe off the excess, that's how much water. It's however much water that this holds. That's how much water to wet the paper down. Now, in this case, I probably wouldn't dip it again. There's still a, plenty of water on here. So in this case here, I'm gonna show you, I would use like a yellow or, we could take a yellow, little yellow ochre, even a little of this, or we'll put it on here. Okay. So we got plenty of paint in the brush and we will just make straight across, okay? It can be lighter as it goes down. Keep it simple, strokes. I'm gonna turn this a little so there's no glare. Okay. Now the next thing that we're gonna do, and we want we don't want to take too long, we're gonna switch to a purple color. Now for that we're gonna have to wash out the brush. And that I bring in the towel and I actually will dry it off and then I'll dip it in again and tamp off the excess. Now for the purple color, we'll take some blue and some alizarin crimson. And that's way too much, so I'm gonna tap off excess on my brush. Dip in and get some more blue. And we have a purple color. And if that's too light, we can go in and get some Payne's gray and make it a darker purple. I don't know if you can see that. And we got plenty on the brush. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in, while this is still wet, kind of paddle this in. Leaving some spaces open. And now you can dip into a little bit more Payne's Gray and make that a little bit darker and you can pop in a little darker just to kind of vary it up a little bit. And you can even put in some little corner of the brush clouds here. There's a hair that got away. And that really is the extent of the sky. You leave it alone, don't touch it. So the next thing that we're gonna look at is maybe doing like a type of foreground here. And we're gonna stick to just a couple of brushes to make it easier too. So maybe uh, this is where we come to a, a, a point with the, with the water here. Now this is dry from here down. So if we take that same purple color that we have on here and we just drag the brush across lightly, you see how it makes these little, let me turn this a little bit. See how it just makes these sparkles? That's because the brush is just floating on the paper and we're not, we're not, uh, pressing very hard. Now we come in and we get a little bit more Payne's Gray 
right here where it's underneath and we make just a darker pass. You see? Now we have this harmony going on here. Now we could have put a little yellow underneath to reflect some of that. And a matter of fact, I mean, I still could. I could put, you know, I could put some yellow in there. It's a little late now, but I mean, I could put a little bit in there. But you get the idea with the sparkles on the bottom. And you could let a little bit of that run in there, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if we were going to put, at this point here, we could put mountains, we could put trees, we could put whatever we want. Like if we want to put like somewhat of a distance, we use the same purple. Okay. And we can make some hills. And the lighter paint that we have on, the lighter amount of pigment that we have on here, and the... The, the more faded this will look like. Okay, so we have this distance here. And now we could dip into some more blue and red and Payne's gray. And we can make a very dark set of hills here. Okay, so immediately, now these hills look like they're way back there now. Okay. So now we have two layers going back. We have the colors from the top coming back inside. And then now, nextly, what we could do is we could take some blue color, make this a little more blue, because we want to stay within the same theme of colors. And we can create some things on the ground, some foreground things. It doesn't really have to be anything specific. This is just for the ease of showing you. Okay. And of course you can always, uh, you know, take some blue and you can, if you wanna have a tree here, just use the corner of the brush. And you could put in some trees. Again, I said I was going to keep this simple. I just used the corner of the brush again. And we have some trees here, some foliage. And this instantly turns into a bit of a hill. Now we can add a little bit of Payne's Gray. We can create some layers here. And we can put as many trees in as we want. We can, you know, have another layer of trees there. And over here we can, we can make a really strong foreground tree and then something I like to do is I like to come back in with some yellow and just kind of highlight just drop in some highlights you don't have to do that, but it adds a little, little green. And we've got this that looks like some water here and 
different layers going on. And then, of course, we can pop in the bird. And special effects. We can take our plastic card and you can create some tree trunks and just take the brush and cover a couple of spots so it doesn't look like it doesn't belong there. And then even more special effects. We can put some rocks in here. And one thing I'm seeing not a lot of people are doing is, is um, anchoring these rocks. I see people are just scraping them in. I see people, and for me, these need, these need to have a little shadow underneath them. Like so. Just to give them that little more effect of realism. And we'll give this a little... We're going to give a little bit in back here. Just to... Have some foliage along the back here. And that's it. I mean, you got a nice, interesting sky. I would have liked to have more yellow down in here. And I probably still could. If I had my spray bottle, I could spray a little bit of yellow in there. There's this nice streak coming here, which is actually kind of an accident. Um, if I wanted to put a little bit more yellow, I'm sure I could find a way to work it in there. Um, one way I could probably do it is just take a little bit on the brush. I don't want to spoil it too much. I don't know if you can even see that, but there's a little bit of yellow in there. Have a few highlights. Better to give it a, enough yellow. We can do that. And that's pretty much it. You can see, looking in here, how many layers we have going on in the trees. You can always come back and if there's something you don't like. Touch those up a little bit. Maybe some more yellow highlights. Maybe a few yellow highlights back in there. And that's it. We just got a little touch of yellow here. Grass coming down. And that's pretty much it. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to disturb too much here. Um, this is an area where you start getting where you can start fussing. Come back in with your dark darks. A little bit of Payne's gray. And those dark darks will really highlight everything. Bring out, bring out the color. See how dark now it makes this look lighter? So I won't do too much more. All that's left is to sign it, and that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you picked up a few good tips. And uh, you can always check me out on my website, which will be in the link's description below. And I'm also on Patreon if you want more in-depth videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate the viewing, the comments, and all of the support. Have a great week.